So we were summarizing the steps here for E2. Uh, we labeled the leading group and uh, the beta hydrogen. All right, and then you got to draw the Newman projection. It looks like you guys might need to do some practice on that. So you should draw the eye, and you should have the eye looking down the alpha-beta bond. You should draw the eye looking down the alpha-beta bond. Now, I drew the eye on the left. It would be perfectly fine to draw the eye on the right. You can draw it on either side, whichever you like. Um, but uh, you should actually draw the eye in. Because different people can put the eye in different places, different people can end up with different Newman projections and still be correct. Um, and then, carefully draw the Newman projection, label the alpha and the beta carbons in the Newman projection as well. So that would take some practice. And again, I think it's good to actually circle the leading group and the beta hydrogen so we don't lose track of them. All right, and then if necessary, rotate the Newman projection so that the leading group and the beta hydrogen are anti-periplanar to each other. That basically just means anti. Rotate the hydrogen and the leading group until they're anti to each, to each other. That's what we did in this picture. Even if they start, like, instead of being eclipsed in that configuration, even if they are um, the, what's the? Gauche. St gauche or Yeah, stack. if they're gauche, um, then you would still need to rotate them. Okay. The only time you wouldn't need to rotate them is if the initial picture is already anti. Oh, okay. That's right. If the initial picture is already anti, then it's already good, and you can just stick with that. Um, but if the initial picture is not already anti, you need to draw a new picture that's rotated so it and is It doesn't anti. have to be up and down, right? You can, it can go across and you could just... That's right. It could be, yes, yeah, so that's right, as long as they're 180 degrees from each other. That would be anti. It was just a coincidence here that in the original picture they were both pointing down. Um, but you could get a Newman projection where they were pointing off to a slant. That's right, so you've got to watch out for that. And does that mean that when, okay, so after you rotate it, does that affect the rate? That if it was already anti periplanar when you draw it, like well, if they maybe will compare, you know, which reaction will be faster? Right. I don't think that would come up because remember, it's very easy rotation around this single right. bond. Okay. Um, this is constantly, um, every millisecond or so, rotating around. Okay. So there's no real um, significance to the, how they happen to draw it. Okay. Uh, it's in not the as if the, it's like, like, okay, we have to rotate this way and then connect. It's just right. like, it's just yeah. happening. That's going to happen so fast that it's not going to have, it's not gonna be inter have an interesting effect. Okay. Yeah. As long as you have free rotation, um, then uh, you assume it's going to happen very quickly. Okay. Uh, all right, so we, were, we, we said to rotate until these were anti. Again, it helps to have them circle so you can see they're anti. And then um, it's still very easy to get confused here. You should actually probably draw this line through the leaving group and the beta hydrogen so you can clearly see which substituents are on the same side of the line and which substituents are on opposite sides of the line. So all these little notational tricks that I used here can be really helpful to you when you're doing a problem like this. Okay. Um, so I actually drew the line. And then, remember how we did this? We started with just the skeleton. We started by just drawing the skeleton with the beta and the alpha hydrogen. And then one by one, or actually two by two, we put in the substituents. So for example, you can start with two substituents that are on the same side in your Newman projection and put them on the same side in the product. And then you can put in the other two substituents. And really take your time and check your work there, because you know, it's easy to get confused and make a mistake points that you don't need to. Remember that once you have the anti periplanar transition state, you just retain that configuration in the product. So anything that is on the same side of our line in um, the uh, Newman projection will still be on the same side of the double bond uh, over here. All right, and then that uh, finally gives us our product, and that, that's going to be uh, our answer over there. So that's quite a bit of uh, work. Um, maybe I'll mention before I forget um, I, I kind of gave you, I, I tried to give an explanation for why we need the anti periplanar transition state. And the explanation I gave is that it minimizes the steric hindrance. Steric hindrance is not a big obstacle to E2, but still, if it's easy to get to lower the steric hindrance, you should do that. Um, that's maybe not the most 100% accurate definition. That's good enough for an introductory course like that, just to soothe my conscience, I should say. There, there are somewhat more sophisticated explanations. But for our purposes, we can just say we need the anti periplanar transition state to minimize steric hindrance. If you had to explain it uh, on the test, I think that would be an acceptable answer here, too. Okay. Um, any questions? So this kind of question would be show the mechanism and the product. They could ask it many different ways. They could ask for mechanism and product. They could ask the mechanism, or they could ask for the product. Um, even if they don't ask for the mechanism, you should be getting into the habit of doing mechanisms anyway to help yourself. But uh, they could ask it either way. Mm -hmm. okay. And then also, so this is a pretty simple one because there's only, well, I guess there are more carbons, but sometimes in the book, like in, in the second hand book, it has ones where it's like, do I put it on the more substituted carbon or the other one? And 
it's like they have different answers. I don't know how to explain it well, but um, like you'll have this and this and all those. That's right. So that's the Hoffman and Zaitsev yeah. um, rules. That's kind of what we talked about before. That happens when there's more than one beta carbon. That happens when there's more than one beta carbon and you have to decide which beta carbon to make the double bond to. So that's something you should mark and come back to for the final. Okay. You actually won't need that so for this midterm. It? You won't need that for this midterm, you'll need that for the final. Because it's in, it's in the chapter. Yeah, it's in the, elimination, it's in the elimination chapter, but actually in this course, they're not gonna cover that until the final. And we're not doing addition reactions until later, right? That's also for the final, that's right. I was right. reading that and I was just, yeah. Oh yeah, you can hold off on that chapter. <laughs> that's right, you should but just do should, the substitution and elimination chapter. But we should do chapter 12, right? Which is that? Predicting products. Um, even that, I, um, it wouldn't hurt to look at that. Um, the, the part that's most useful from that chapter, let's take a look at the table of contents. For chapter 12. So the one part of chapter 12 you should definitely do is section 3. Substitution versus elimination. Yeah. So obviously you should do section 3 of chapter 12 there in the second language book. The other parts might actually be more useful for you than the final. You can skim those and see if they'll be helpful to you. But we're going to have to predict products, right? All that's right, things. but um, not in. Uh, but since this is at the end of the book, it's yeah. kind of um, designed for people who have seen more mechanisms than you have. So go ahead. Um, I haven't looked at those recently, so go ahead and look at those. If you're, if you're finding them helpful, great. But I wouldn't spend a lot of time There's on a lot that. of the midterms on Thursday, so should, right. we not, should we not? Yeah, I wouldn't make that your top priority. I would do section 3. I would do section 3 of 12. And then more important is go back and redo the sections in the second language book you've already done that gave you trouble. Like, for example, this, for example. Um, the real key to OCHEM is not doing lots and lots of new problems, but redoing the old ones until you have mastery. So I'm sure the first time you went through the, the second language book, there were things that gave you some difficulty, and I hope you marked those. Mm -hmm. Everything will make much more sense if you go through it a second or even a third time. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would be, would be better than going to the other sections of chapter 12. So I would just assign section 3 of chapter 12 for right now. So also, have you guys done chapter 8? Yeah. Yeah? So okay. this test will be 8, 9, 10 for us. Yeah, basically 8, 9, 10, and 12, 3. Um, and you might want to go back and review sections uh, 6 1 and 6 2 on Newman projections, because you might need that uh, on the test as well. There might also be some stereochemistry, because um, you guys are just starting yeah. stereochemistry on the last one. Yeah, I thought about basal compounds too. And because yeah. I went back over to chapter 7, and because in one of the, um, like, the, in the two of the problem sets that where we began this midterm, where like, it was the two lectures before. Fisher productions too. It was Fisher productions and also drawing the different and finding out whether things are enantiomers or diastereomers. And right. there's a really good, like yeah. the chapter goes over that a lot. And then these yeah. compounds. If you're looking at those ones, I need to go over those again too. Yeah. So yeah, you guys had, um, there was, I think there was some stereochemistry in your first midterm, mm -hmm. but I think there's going to be more on the next midterm. So, I, uh, so yeah, so you have plenty of, on your plate to, to go back and review. Uh, this is a good chapter here, chapter 7, like you said. So that would be a good one to review as well. Again, your goal there is to basically have mastery of those ideas. Yeah. Um, but also keep in mind, the stuff in the second language book is the basics. Right. Um, so um, hopefully, what, if you feel you have mastery of that, you need to try some harder problems like you might have in your sample exams. However, um, it's useless to try the hard problems until you know the basics. So try to get the basics down. So you have to invest a considerable amount of time. You need to invest enough time to master the basics in the second language book and then do the more advanced problems in any sample exams or homework uh, that you have. Okay, so yeah, that would be uh, 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 some good stuff to have uh, on your plate. Chapter eight in mechanisms, you might be good to review, especially section one, section two, three, four, and five. Um, Section six and section seven are a little less important right now. Is that that we, might have, we don't have to know the regiochemistry because I feel like we've been talking about that a lot. There really actually has um, it's not going to be too much regiochemistry until the final. Okay. So yeah, actually um, I would uh, I would downplay sections eight six and eight seven, uh, but the other sections of chapter eight can be really helpful to you right now. So those would be good ones to go back and review again. Okay, um, all right. Well. Um, so I just gave you a, uh, actually a pretty simple E2. Let's do one more E2 to make sure we have this down. You have this in your notes? Can I erase this? Okay. Yeah, so as a reminder again, you can skip the stuff on Hoffman and Zaitsev in the second language book for now. That'll be for the final. That's confused. Okay.